The 1960s was the decade when cars became much more affordable after the post-war austerity years. The Jaguar E-Type and Ford Mustang brought power and style within everyday reach, while the Austin Mini became the template for all future family cars. The 60s also gave us the supercar by most popular definitions. A mid-mounted engine, two seats, dramatically beautiful styling, and wild impracticality. Apparently, if you can remember the 60s, then you weren't there. But these are our favourite unforgettable cars of the decade. Although the Lamborghini Miura is remembered as the first purely road-going supercar, the 250 LM, Ferrari's first foray into mid-engined design, predated it, but it was never homologated as originally intended. The 250 LM is hardly a forgotten Ferrari, but it does tend to be overshadowed by its cousin with that famous GTO badge. Not as elegant overall as the rest of the 250 lineage, the 250 LM suffers from slightly gawky transitional styling, representing its place betwixt the front and mid-engined eras. Introduced at the 1963 Paris Motor Show, the 250 LM, LM for Le Mans, signalling its intent, took the GTO's glorious V12 and mounted it behind the driver. Despite once saying that the horse always pulls the cart, Enzo Ferrari had already seen success with this layout in Formula 1 and at Le Mans. In fact, the 250 LM should have been called the 275 after the individual cylinder volume of its 3.3 litre V12, but Ferrari was trying to pull a homologation fast one and persuade the FIA that the requisite 100 had been built for it to race as a GT. Not willing to be fooled twice, the FIA declared that the car had to run as a prototype, in which guise it claimed Ferrari's last outright Le Mans victory in 1965. The car famously built to settle a grudge was presented to the Ford Motor Company board in June 1963. It was the work of the Advanced Vehicle Department, led by British expat Roy Lunn, who had earlier designed a mid-engined Mustang concept. Allegedly, the Ford Hiops took all of five minutes to give the project, famously named after its height in inches, the nod, and Lunn was sent back over the pond to find a suitable company to build the car. Lotus, Cooper and Lola were all considered, with the latter getting the contract due to its experience of building chassis around Ford V8s with its Mark VI GT racer. Development took place in the Ford Advanced Vehicles HQ in Slough. Aided by Bruce McLaren and a primitive computer program to help design the suspension. Famously walking away with four consecutive Le Mans victories, a number of GT40 road cars were also built, including the Mark III variant with luggage space and an ashtray, qualifying it for supercar status. While the Mark III looked like an elongated version of the racing car, it was nowhere near as successful. Famously, Ford built only seven and couldn't even sell all of those. It was another Enzo Ferrari caused grudge that led to the creation of the Lamborghini Car Company. But its founder, Ferruccio Lamborghini, was as adamant as the old man that engines belonged in front of the driver. So, what is regarded as the world's first mid-engined road-going supercar was designed in secret by the firm's three top engineers, Giampaolo Dallara, Paolo Stanzini, and Bob Wallace. Their boss, was eventually won round by the argument that the car could be presented as a PR stunt at the 1966 Geneva Motor Show, wrapped in a sensational Marcello Gandini penned body. Of course, the reaction to the Mira, named after a lineage of famous Spanish fighting bulls, was unequivocal. Build it, they said. Taking a cue from, of all things, the Mini, the Mira's 3.9-litre V12 was cast in one piece with its gearbox, 
sharing the same lubrication system. Just 764 were built between 1966 and 1973, but famous owners included Frank Sinatra, Miles Davis and Eddie Van Halen. The Mangusta is another supercar created as a result of a grudge, and we thought everyone was so chilled out in the 60s. Mangusta means mongoose, a creature famous for killing cobras. Alejandro de Tomaso had agreed a deal with Carol Shelby of Cobra fame to develop a new Can-Am race car, but failed to deliver in time for the 1965 season. Shelby pulled out of the deal and joined the Ford GT40 development effort instead. The De Tomaso P70 chassis was therefore adapted for road use, and given a body designed by Giorgetto Gigiaro at Gear, which was notable for the gull wings covering the mid-mounted Ford V8. Arguably better looking than its successor the Pantera, the Mangusta suffered from poor weight distribution and questionable handling. Just over 400 were produced between 1967 and 1971. A tantalising what if. Could the McLaren M6 GT have predated the F1 as the foundation of McLaren road car dynasty by decades? McLaren wanted to race at Le Mans using the successful M6A chassis adapted to Group 4 GT rules, but homologation changes meant the race project was shelved. Instead, Bruce and chief designer Gordon Coppock decided to create a limited production road car using the M6A chassis and a 5-litre Chevrolet V8. It was intended to be the fastest, quickest and most nimble road car on sale. The prototype registered OBH 500H, was capable of doing 0 to 100 miles per hour in 8 seconds and going on to a top speed of 180 miles per hour. Bruce McLaren used it as his daily driver until his untimely death, which brought to an end the dreams of series production. However, a couple of examples are known to exist, with one starring at the Goodwood Revival back in 2015. <laughs> 